Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and it's now time to make the sample data in the uh, Gropy code more closely reflect what I've planned here where column foo equals hello and column bar equals world and lumberjack equals question mark and the second row being spam eggs and question mark. So you still need a special row for the function names and the uh, layout I made here is pretty good for that. I'll get rid of the last item in the dictionary that's no longer needed and then uh, that first foo this is going to have to be a, a very consistent index that I can reach in and grab every time and I think the easiest thing to remember is uh, zero. So I think I'll put zero in there and I know I can get all my function and parameter names just by reaching in and uh, grabbing that, that first row with an index of zero. Now uh, this next one, the, uh, you can't have the same keys over and over so I know that hello is going to be the first value and it's no longer one colon foo, it's colon hello and similarly uh, it's bar colon world and uh, lumberjack colon Question mark. Escape. Shift D. Close out the, uh, the dictionary and review the work. So the first one defines the uh, functions and parameters foo, bar, lumberjack. The second one is the first row of data that has a, a job request. Uh, column foo has value hello, column bar has value world, column lumberjack has value question mark. That is in fact the job request according to the system I'm creating. Now we're doing spam and eggs so I will change this word to spam and foo change word change word spam change word eggs and lumberjack continues to be question mark and we do have the old foo and bar uh, objects sitting around so I think just for the sake of cleanliness I'll do uh, del row foo and del row Bar. Those are not destined to really stay there, but it's going to clean it up. Uh, in fact, if I ran this this way, you would see the extra rows. I'll put it up here so you don't see the extra rows. It should just be three rows, one with function names, one with the hello, and one with spam. So we'll write that, and then we'll write it to Python. Okay, Delro missing one require. Oh yeah, you gotta send Delro the the object too. So I made a small mistake here. That needs the s object as one of its parameters, as its first parameter, as a matter of fact. Attribute int object has no attribute in code. And that is for uh, the get values of, of uh, the, uh, let's see, self dict king code in I think that has to do with zero as a, as a key value. Let me experimentally change that to a zero as a string. And then uh, I guess I better delete anything that might be in there as a 
an actual number. Oh, I see. It's because of the uh, probably the appending together of, of values there. Because uh, that, that makes sense. This should probably work. I'm not sure if it's my optimal solution yet. Yes, it works. And zero colon. Okay. Hmm. I could filter the for loop out as it prints these things out. And in fact. That's what I'm going to do because this loop uh, should never process that first row. So I'm just going to do uh, if item, I think the not, the negation goes before it. If not item equals, oh, actually. The best way to state that is item not equals zero as a string, then display it. We can get rid of that. That has served its purpose. And there you go. It just displays the two rows that are set up for processing, skipping over the row that is going to be used for uh, initialization. And uh, I guess as the final thing before doing a commit, I really don't need these guys in there. And I'm going to run it one more time. And hopefully no, nothing with a zero key is actually in there. Yep, it is as it should be. I will always reach in for my functions with a uh, zero key as a string. It's still a very good solution. Thanks for joining me. Uh, this is moving towards replacing those question marks with the actual output of executed functions, which is when this gets really exciting. So um, share the video and don't forget to subscribe.